that is a sign of a sociopath. That is a sure sign of a sociopath. Let me house a little true. I'd like to know your point of view. Hi everybody, welcome to Evening TV. I'm Evening Ransom. And I thank you for being here today. Please, while you're here, feel free to subscribe to my channel. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. My early dating situation with him. Early dates and red flags. What was early dating like? Now we are up in, uh, I'm up in Washington. My brother is there. He's got his fiance from Scotland there. I've been out now one time with R, but I'm not, you know, I'm not planning on necessarily I don't know if I'll, I don't, I'm not really planning on seeing him again. I don't know. Um, you know, I, I'm kind of a little put off by how how it all happened. I was now I was just going to focus on family. So that they've been home for a day or two, and we're working up to the um, the engagement party. We we're going to go out and play some pool. Just as we're getting ready to go, this is like a uh, a couple of my brother's friends and his fiance and myself and the phone rings and it's R and um, my brother picks up the phone and he's completely he's completely put off by the fact that he you know he's like are you dating him like are you dating that loser that's basically what he says it really rubs me wrong like I I just I immediately bristle with that kind of thing. He didn't actually say loser. How I find out loser is my mother tells me that he called him a loser, which is typical for my mother. But, um, you know, so, so he says, are you dating him? I'm like, no, 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 I'm not dating him. Well, anyways, I get on the phone. But he basically sort of invites himself. He's like, you know, you know, basically, can I come along? And I'm like, okay, sure. And so I'm having just a really hard time picturing it, picturing him with my brother and his friends. They're just completely from two different walks of life. It just seems like a very uh, strange, strange fit. But again, it's coming in with some recommendations of people that I respected. And so, you know, I was like, whatever, yes, you know, give it a try. He seems like a, he seems like a nice enough guy. He seems really, you know, attentive and really, you know, enthusiastic and wanting to you know take willing to take risks and put himself out there so anyway so we tell him where, where we're gonna be when we get down there by the time we get down there he's already got everything all set up he's got um, he's bought beer he's got the table reserved he's got you know chairs set up I mean he has you know really gone out of his way to like make make it all really nice you know and, you know show me how, how much effort he is willing to go through for for me and my and my family, playing you know playing pool and we're drinking beer, and it's kind of like it's starting to quickly. It's starting to almost feel like we're even more of a couple than my brother and his fiance. I mean, by by the second hour or so, he's coming by. We're sharing a glass. He's coming by. He's like getting a drink and rubbing my back and you know being like very very attentive and warmly affectionate and I am just it's kind of striking all the co right chords with me and finally um the one of the guy, one of the guys says hey you know your girl's gonna come play and we're like okay sure you know so we go to we go to get up and she's you know she's taller than me so she just hops right up I'm wearing um high heels high heel boots and a skirt and I have my heels like right behind the the bar stool and you know the little bar that goes around the bar stool and i go to get up and my heels get hooked on the bar on the bar down there and i go tipping over and there's no way i can catch myself the glass goes flying across the room catapults across the room smashes on the concrete wall breaks and shatters into a thousand pieces and i fall into a heap on the floor and this bar stool falls on top of me and it is and I mean, it's like silent. It goes silent, and I'm just looking down. I'm just looking down, and uh, and after a couple of seconds, I'm just thinking. I'm mortified. I'm trying to like get my bearings, hoping like my panties aren't showing or something, and uh, my hair is hanging in front of my face. Thank God. I le I just put up my hand and go like that, and then 
fortunately, music starts up again and conversation starts again. And it feels a little less like, you know, I feel like everyone's staring at me and I can breathe. I turn around and I look up and my brother is standing there. And he goes, he says the perfect thing. Happens to me all the time. He says to me, it helps me up, which was just perfect. And uh, so, you know, I kind of dust myself off and I look around. Where's R? Where's R? Oh, he left. He, he, I guess he couldn't take it. He got really embarrassed. He, he bolted. He left. He left. Okay. That's not the worst part. The worst part is, is that I find him, like in the next, the next place we go, or I don't know if I go to sit out to find him, I find him and strike conversation back up and just keep going like nothing happened. I forget all about this. I forget all about this. And it's not, it's not until 10 years later and we're in counseling. This is what's very interesting. 10 years later, we're in counseling. And I remember it. I remember this happening. And I say to him, I am so we're in counseling and I go, you know, I had this memory the other day and I couldn't believe it. But it's like, I kind of feel like it was like a, it was like a, a hint about what was gonna happen. And he goes, are you gonna start talking about that time when you fell on the bar? I thought that he like, uh, I, had, I had completely forgotten about it. And here he knew exactly what I was gonna say before I even said it 10 years later. And I go, and he goes, he goes, he goes, that shit was embarrassing. He goes, I barely knew you. He was still trying to justify it. This blew me away. So I was blown away by so much of it. I was blown away by that I remembered it, that he had that it happened, that he did that. I was blown away by the fact that I just overlooked it and that I that I blocked it out of my memory. I was blown away by the fact that he remembered it. I was blown away by the fact that he still was going to try and justify it, and so I, I start, I try to get, kind of get my berries, and I go, wait a minute, okay. So I ask the therapist, I go, okay, I just, I just, correct me if I'm wrong. If you saw someone fall like that, even a stranger who didn't even know, wouldn't you go up to him and help him up? I mean, wouldn't wouldn't you do that? And he goes, yeah, I would. The other thing that comes out in this counseling session 10 years later, it also comes out that what my husband has told my parents to get them to just so, without asking any questions, just completely take his side and just abandon me, no questions asked, is that he said to them that I've been talking to him about flashbacks and, and lost childhood memories and repressed memories and that um, my childhood is the reason for my depression and all this stuff. Okay, what he's done is he has remembered the very first conversation we had when we very first met 10 years ago. The conversation that I stuffed, the thing that I stuffed that I hadn't talked about in 10 years, he dredged that back up knowing that it was going to trigger my parents and making them think that I hadn't buried it, that I, ha that I hadn't stuffed it, that I, I, was actually, I was actually back to or had always been um, looking for um, ways to expose them. So he had done a few things. He triggered my parents into being, you know, their, their big fears about exposure and he'd also said it an off the track of the real problem, which was him, which was the fact that my, the, my real depression was based on the fact that I was being abused by him. But this to me was just amazing. This was 10 years later, and these things that I had completely forgotten about were now playing out. He had, he had, he had like sucked them away like a, like a chipmunk, like nuts. You know, like these little pieces of these little pieces of toxic poison, he kept away like nuts just to infuse into my life 
as soon as he was ready to discard me. That is a sign of a sociopath. That is a sure sign of a sociopath. 